The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. And then we're both wobbly like, you know, two sailors on a ship that's going down and I ended up falling a little bit on top of you. Um, and then after, is it okay if I say what you said? Oh, go for it. <laughs> so, Why not? So, I mean, that, you it's so just, we're supposed to be there, there and elegant. Instead, we're writhing in the mud. Lisa Harper shares about life, an obsessively grateful, undone by Jesus, genuinely happy and not faking it through the hard stuff kind of 100 day devotional. Next. Hi, I'm Sheila Walsh. Welcome to Life Today. I'm so glad you stopped by and you're going to be really glad too that you tuned in today. I got a letter, um, technically I guess not a letter, I got it on my Facebook page from a teenage girl and she said, my mom keeps buying me these devotional books and honestly I think they're so boring. Is there <laughs> anything else you could suggest? And I said, boy, do I have the book for you. Um, my guest today is Lisa Harper. Uh, so first of all, welcome you. I, I can't, like my cheeks are cramping. I'm so happy to be with you. I miss seeing no, you all I'm, the time. I miss you too. Lisa and I used to work together um, at Women of Faith. And so then we traveled together every weekend. I, I, I got to spend, I think, 10 years of my life every weekend by your side, which That's is the amazing. only reason that I'm not incarcerated right now. No, we got into because quite a lot of trouble. We got into a lot of trouble, but I, I feel like so much of my growing up and even God preparing me to be a mom is due to you. I'm just oh. indebted to you, and I just think you hung the moon. So, thank you. <laughs> Let me tell you why this appeals to every woman from eight years of age to 88. Belly rings to bladder control problems. Exactly, I couldn't have said it better <laughs> myself and I wouldn't have put it that way, but there you go. Okay, so it's called Life, an Obsessively Grateful, Undone by Jesus, Genuinely Happy and Not Faking It Through the Hard Stuff kind of 100 day divorce. <laughs> it's so brilliant. Let me tell, mm. talk to me, what was the genesis of this for you? I almost blew us up. It was the beginning of COVID and I got, you know where we live, Missy mm, and I live beautiful out in the boonies and, and all of a sudden it was like, you know, I travel for work and it was like, well, okay, these long months are stretched in front of us and I'm not a good couch potato. So I thought I'll just do a little light landscaping and you know, I'm single and so I have chainsaws and I thought I'm just gonna cut down this tree because it would look better with a bush there because I had just time on my hands and I'm sawing this tree, the bottom of this tree with a chainsaw and I, you know me, I'm a little bit of a delayed responder and so I, I just thought that's odd. And I, you know, I had the safety glasses. I was, you know, had worship music, but I thought that's odd. I didn't know this chainsaw threw sparks. And then right as I thought that I smelled propane and I was like, <gasps> I mean, I, I, I cut through part of a propane line and I thought, you oh know, after gosh. the, you know, the emergency crews came and everything and told me I almost blew us up. I thought, <laughs> you know, I probably need to harness some of this energy over this <laughs> being discombobulated by, you know, just the whole world changed. And I sensed God saying, Lisa, you think this season is tumultuous, but if you'll look back over your life, you'll see that every valley you've walked through, I was sufficient. And I mm -hmm. thought, I'm just going to go back and kind of mine the chapters of my life. You know, wow. the seasons mm -hmm. that we were laughing so hard, we had tears streaming down our face or or grieving so deeply I ran out of tears. I thought I just want to go back through my story and God's story because I really believe it's redemptive from cover to cover. And it ended up being a devotional book and, and I told my publisher that I just, you know, I always feel like sometimes devotional books are written by the saints who have it all together. <laughs> and I feel like I've got to like get my stuff together before I even start reading the devotional. And I said, I want people to feel safe mm. before they open it up. Mm. So my only non-negotiable was that crazy subtitle because I want the woman who says, goodness gracious, how could a perfect God actually delight in, in a woman like me that has, you know, so many mistakes in my backstory. And so it was, it was much more fun than I expected. So we, we dive pretty deep. Every mm -hmm. devotional has scripture, but, um, but it's fun too. A lot of a lot of wonderful times with God, whether it was a high or low. You know, it's interesting for all the years that I've known you, no matter what you're talking about, no matter what you're teaching on, no matter what you're writing, 
all the strands go back to your passionate belief in the power of the word of God. I do. And I almost felt like this is a safe place for some people who are thinking, yeah. I'm not sure where to start. Right. I'm, I'm not sure how to dive into Habakkuk, yeah. but maybe I could read a story. I, I totally agree with you. I think, especially in our culture, I feel like scripture is either maligned as a, as a punitive rule book or it's taken as kind of a spiritual smorgasbord. Just reach in and get a meme that you can put on social media because <laughs> it's inspirational. And it's like, oh my goodness, it's so much better than that. From beginning to end, God is always, if you get it, if you get the context, he's always restraining evil. He's always restoring our dignity. He, he's not a mean God. He's not a capricious God. He's a, he's a redeemer. And, and then he's always pointing us toward Jesus. Yeah. You know, always. So I, I see a lot of people who think the Old Testament or talk to a lot of people who say the Old Testament is like God is a unibrowed librarian and <laughs> New Testament you know, is Jesus with Brett girl hair extensions hugging everybody. <laughs> and, and if that were true, God would be bipolar. That is not who he is. Yeah. He is perfectly compassionate perfectly holy, but so accessible yeah. all the way through. It's just, we don't usually take the time to get to know the, remember that VH1 story on um, um, show? I don't know if they still have it and I'm not advocating it, but <laughs> behind the music, oh, yeah. you know, when mm -hmm. they tell the stories yeah. kind of behind why that song was written, I think we don't take the time to go, oh my goodness, this is a real story. It's a supernatural love story. Let me dig in there. Cause it's amazing. It's not boring. It's the antithesis of boring. Yeah. Now talking about Restoring dignity. Let me take mm. you to day two. <laughs> so day that, one, I'm reading day like one. That's my favorite devotional. And I'm like, oh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> With the real happy, please stand up. Happy the poor in spirit. Then I get to t day two. You know I couldn't have that story and not put it out there. God would not have let us live that moment if we weren't supposed to share it. You realize I have the photographs to prove it? <laughs> you got you to tell the story. I have, no, no, you wrote it. You have to tell the story. <laughs> okay, you know concise is not my gift. Uh, so I'll try to make the story, because this story could be like a week of shows. Um, if you haven't figured out, I am pathologically biased about Sheila. I think she is just, she truly is one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my whole life. And you're much classier than I am. It's like one of these things is not like the other one. But we got <laughs> invited to be the um, kind of the hostesses at a at a Christian movie premiere. And so it was a, it wasn't a you know it wasn't a Hollywood red carpet. It was more strip mall polypropylene kind of an event. <laughs> And Barry, at the time, husband. Sheila's husband, had this just claustrophobic little sports car. And so I was in my usual fluffy season. So I was like double spanks. You were in some gorgeous, elegant outfit. And we get to the movie premiere. And he, remember, he parked us out at the edge of the parking lot. He got so a new car. Can, no, yeah. he just oh, wanted that was it. to come near his car. I had forgotten. I need to pack that lunch to get to the mall. I was remembering it even kinder because I love Barry. So I didn't want to <laughs> cast a gate Barry in this. So he parks us away from the, from where the event is. But I thought it was so we could fluff and, you know, kind of mm. get better before we walk up to this uh, oh exciting <laughs> event. Oh, theme carpet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with like 12 people <laughs> waiting for us. I uh, thought it was eight, breath. but I, so I, I'm exaggerating. Yeah. So anyway, Sheila gets out just so elegantly and so smoothly, but Barry had parked you right next to a grassy median and it had rained like the last several yet days. So you didn't know, cause all you saw was the green grass that it was so muddy and you were wearing your typical, you know, four inch heels and she got stuck. It was like she was pinned in the mud like a stork and you were kind of flailing. Oh, flailing And of course, kind. Barry's not rescuing you. He's taking pictures. No, he's taking and photos. you are my like favorite person and like my, my big sister. And I'm like, I'm gonna rescue you, doggone it. But I'm packed in the back of his car and spanked. So it took me like 13 minutes to get out. I think I broke a nail. <laughs> I finally get out to rescue you. Well, I'm always have been bigger than you. And I also was wearing heels. So when I go to grab you to, to stabilize you, I get stuck. And then we're both wobbly, like, you know, two sailors on a ship that's going down. And I ended up falling a little bit on top of you. Um, and then after, is it okay if I say what you said? Oh, go for it. <laughs> so, Why not? So, I mean, you it's so just, we're supposed to be there, there and elegant. Instead, we're writhing in the mud. Sheila's underneath me. And I hear this beautiful Scottish lilt. Help, I'm peeing. <laughs> <laughs> Which I couldn't 
<laughs> stop we were laughing. laughing so oh, hard. I'm just crying, <laughs> laughing. And so then we have to somehow get ourselves up from this just messy heap and pretend like, you know, we have it together and walk toward the event. It really was one of the most, I always have so much fun with you. I think the thing I love about you, I am obviously a hot mess. <laughs> you don't look like a hot mess. You, there's just something about you that's so, uh, I always feel like there's something about you that's so royal, oh not just gosh. Jesus, but you are <laughs> elegant. But you never, ever um, put up a facade. You know, there's just this honest, I can't make it without Jesus. Do you remember we never even made it into the movie? Yeah, we because we were so well, muddy. We, the we whole back of us was, we were like the swamp creature. <laughs> but we tried, you had to do that television show, remember? I know, I and know. they had like the drone and, and the Tony camera. Tony Romo was there. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. I forgot oh, it was about awful. that. I just stood behind you and cackled <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> but the fact you included it, I feel so honored. I felt like it was very holy. I felt like I could, it, might, it was a little bit of a stretch, but I was pretty sure I could get us to scripture. Okay, so some of the stories are funny, but some of them, I mean, you could call it, there's depth here, Lisa. Yeah. This is a deep, profound book. Mm -hmm. um, day 62, you talk about um, the holiness of helplessness. Oh, yeah. Talk to us about that. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite living theologians, and I know yours too, is Dr. Tim Keller. Mm -hmm. And I was studying the Gospel of Mark, and you know that story where the dad of the sick kid and because my little girl that adores you, your Aunt Sheila, but I got to be Missy's mom through the miracle of adoption. And Missy was really, really sick when I started the story. And so I identify with a parent who's worried mm -hmm. about a child's physical health. And there's that point where he confesses to Jesus when he thinks his son is dying. He says, I believe, in other words, I know you're the Christ. I know you could help but I'm dying today. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my son. Help me in my unbelief. Yeah. And I was studying that story and it was especially resonant with me because of some of the, some of Missy's health is issues and my fear. You know, I, I want to be so faithful and know that God is always good, but I am so stinking human that sometimes I forget and I get scared. And I was reading a Tim Keller commentary on that particular story in Mark's gospel. And he said, um, and you know, he's such a brilliant theologian and godly man. It kind of surprised me coming from him, but he said that it is helplessness, not holiness, that's the first step to accessing intimacy with God. Wow. And I Profound. just, that slayed me. I thought, you know, sometimes I try to come before the Lord with all of my, um, oh, whatever little, you know, power that I have, power is the wrong word, but competence, mm -hmm. thinking he'll, he'll kind of bless that. And it's like he tells me over and over again, you come to me with what you don't have. Come to me with your absolute lack and I will bring vibrancy out of void. Mm -hmm. And so come to me when your heart is in pieces, bring all of yourself, even the, the messy, scared parts to all of me and I will redeem it. And so I do think, I think just recognizing the fact that we can't save ourselves, can't heal ourselves, mm -hmm. can't infuse ourselves with, with peace when life is hard. I think to bring that before the Lord and confess our neediness, I think that's really critical for us to have a vibrant, intimate relationship with God. I was telling a friend the other day, I said, it's kind of like you got to peel off your spanks when you come before Jesus. <laughs> Don't try to hold yeah. your stomach in and act like you have it all together. You just go, you know me, mm -hmm. you know, he knows the places where I've been so foolish and my faith has been so feeble. And yet he still calls me not just daughter, but he's like, ah, thank you, hung the moon. His, <laughs> his kindness, yeah. um, it just gets bigger, doesn't it? It does. The older I get, the yeah. more undone I am by the kindness of God. It's so beautiful. It's, it's almost like yeah. the capacity increases. And it it's does. almost as if suffering makes space for a bigger picture I of God. I think that, you know, of course, the veil, the salvific veil between us and God was, was torn when Jesus gave up his life on the cross. And so I want to be careful with semantics, but there's still, you know, Paul says we see through the glass dimly. Mm. So we have a blurry lens. Effectively, you take human finitude and you try to look at the magnitude of God. We can't see him perfectly clearly. I do think suffering, difficulty, pain, if we bring that to the Lord, I think that blur gets a little more clear. Yeah. I feel like the times that I've seen God the clearest 
have been when I'm, I'm honest enough to recognize how desperate I am for yeah. him. I was, um, you know, I've gone back to school. Yeah, doing um, your doctorate. Doing a doctorate. But, but just to see Jesus, you know, I, I believe know, we, he's revealed it. to us through Revelation, Holy Spirit, and, and Holy Red. And so I just want to see Jesus bigger. Plus, I'm an old mom. Missy's 11, I'm 57. And I think it's one thing for me to say, honey, learning is good. It's another thing for her to see me That's next true. to her yeah. doing my homework. But I was in a class with a, um, this professor has since become, he's the head of my dissertation team. So I have a brag on him because I want to pass. <laughs> but his whole point over and over and over again, he says, you have to study the Bible with the understanding that God is always in the process of mitigating evil. He's always in the process of restoring our inherent dignity as his image bears. He's always in the process of turning us toward the true north of Jesus Christ. He was talking about a passage in scripture. This was two years ago. It's like my second, second class at Denver. And, and he just uncovered this kindness of God in a passage I had understood to be punitive. Like I thought God was kind of angry in that passage. And I was so taken aback. I thought I've been studying the Bible for 40 years and it just gets better. He gets bigger and class was over and everybody left. And, and I just couldn't get out of my chair. I was so overwhelmed that I just began to, to weep wow. at the kindness of God. And Dr. Howard had forgotten some, something. He came back in a class and there I sit, you know, this older woman blubbering in his class. And he was kind of taken aback. He, I think he probably thought she needs to be in the counseling track, <laughs> you know, not, the, not studying hermeneutics. And, and so he was kind of taken aback, but he said, are you okay? And I just said, I'm just, I can't believe he's even better than I hoped oh, wow. he'd be. And I feel like that as a believer, I feel like I'm still you know, kind of in the honeymoon season with Jesus, mm -hmm. he's better yeah. than ever. And God's work reveals that. Yeah. We do ourselves such a disservice when we think this is boring or we only open it up to be dutiful yeah. or we use it as a club to knock somebody over the head that we disagree with. I'm like, oh, it's so much better than that, so much more liberating. Coming out of, you know, 2020 last year yeah. was just, you know, it was difficult. Very, very difficult. Yeah. What does, what does the companionship of Christ in the places mm. that make no sense mm. do for you? I couldn't. We had, a, I told you off camera because I um, trust you and love you. But we had someone very, very, very close to us commit suicide um, just about a month into COVID. And so COVID had already you know, caused most of us to be so discombobulated, um, at least in our generation. It was unprecedented. And, you know, there were just so many personal um uh, things that were confusing and then globally you're like goodness gracious I can't watch the news anymore I'm gonna you know eat more carbs than I normally do uh, I lived off chips and queso for about six months there <laughs> but after after this suicide I felt like um you know just the harshness of life had kind of knocked the mm -hmm. legs out from under my stool and it was the it was the presence of God just sitting there with me in that sad place, he was almost palpable. I mean, I yeah. would sit on my front porch and cry while Missy was still asleep, just grieving this, this death of someone I love very much. And it was, you know, there's the times that you go, I, I can almost yeah. see him. I can't see him with my eyes, but in my, in my spirit, God is right next to me in this other rocking chair, just yeah. with me, yeah. the witness of God, mm -hmm. I couldn't make it mm -hmm. without the witness, witness of God. And I, because I tend to be a big talker, too verbose, and I, I'm usually running a little bit too fast, sometimes it's in the dark and it's in those quiet spaces that the, you know, the static in my head gets quiet enough mm -hmm. to actually recognize his presence. So I don't think he's bigger in the dark and yeah. the hard places. I just think you see I, better in the dark. Yeah. I know that every single one of you, you're going to want this book, not just for yourself. You're going to want one if you've got children, if you've got nieces and nephews, you're going to want this book. And I'm going to tell you how um, you can get it. We're going to send it to you. But first of all, I want to help ask you to help us with something. Um, the last time I was in Africa, just the, the lack of clean water was astounding. And I think when Jesus washes your eyes again and you see better, you want to make a difference. So mm. let me ask you, would you watch this?
it's been absolutely devastating to see how hard these people work to get water and it's not a clean source of water. To have talked to so many mothers who've had to bury their children, it's something that should never happen. I'm so sorry. This is water that will kill you. This is death water. Hi, bong nang bong ហើយការនឹងពុកយន្តទុំនៅទៅលក់ពុកអ្នកជូទឹកសន្តហើយការនឹងឃើញគេទៅព្រែងទៀតម៉ាយផ្ញើទៅជាបតទៅទៀតព
for many mothers and their families living in extreme poverty, this is their only choice. But with your help, they won't have to make this choice ever again. Mission Water for Life provides clean, disease-free water for thousands of children and their families, giving them a life free from the fear of death. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10. $72 will provide for 15. And $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift, we'll send you Speak Your Name, devotions and declarations on the reality of Jesus. Filled with stunning imagery, these 40 encouraging devotions by Lenny Renee serve as a reminder of the power of Jesus' name. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Be Refreshed picture. This beautiful ceramic picture is decorated with Proverbs 11.25 and is sure to make a lovely addition to your table or home. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well. And you may request our brand new inspiring bronze sculpture, Divine Servant. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Thanks so much. If the lines are busy, keep calling. Keep calling and get through. And remember, for any gift at all, we're going to send you Lisa Harper's book, Life, an obsessively grateful undone by Jesus, genuinely happy and not faking it through the hard stuff kind of 100-day devotional. It's just <laughs> awesome. If you're able to give a little more, um, $100 will send you this beautiful Be Refreshed picture. Um, it's a great reminder to, to pray. And because scripture says that those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Remember, this is the last week of our drilling water wells. So we need you to call. If you haven't called yet, you've been holding back for a bit. Let's do it. Let's make sure we bless people in Jesus name. And Lisa, I just want to say this is fantastic. And I'm so grateful that God put us on the planet at the same time. At the same time, I know. What a gift for me. <laughs> all right, so I'm Sheila Walsh for James, Betty, and all of us here at Life Today. We love you. So until we see you next time, I'm Sheila Walsh saying goodbye. God bless you. tomorrow. You are not forced to follow God. You're not a puppet. You're a living being in creation with freedom to choose. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.